Thank you all for being here today. Um, before we get started, I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we are almost 50 people. We have about 70 people registered. So there might be folks that join us, um, you know, throughout the presentation, which is perfectly fine. Um, and we will be together from noon to one. So thank you for sharing your lunch hour. Feel free to eat your lunch. If you're actually doing that, please don't skip your lunch. <laughs> um, you can even turn your camera off if it makes you more comfortable. Um, I don't want anyone like going into a caloric breakdown. Um, we are recording this event and we'll be adding it to our online resource library um, shortly, you know, a few days after today. So just want to make sure everyone's aware of that. And um, we also just ask that people keep themselves muted. I think we all know this a few years into so much virtual stuff, but keep yourselves muted unless you're you know, have a question or speaking um, during maybe Q&A time. Uh, in the meantime, throughout our time together, if you want to throw questions, comments, anything into the chat, I want to encourage people to do so. Um, our staff, Alyssa and Cecilia, and also our program committee chair, Heather Rowan, will be watching the chat and letting me know if there's anything um, I should be addressing while I'm presenting, otherwise we might save some things for the end. Um, and if folks could just take a minute to, in the chat, throw in, you know, an introduction of yourself, who you are, um, what organization you're with, and maybe where you're zooming in from today, that would be really helpful. Um, our team too, like our staff and board, please, you know, introduce yourselves in the chat. And I'm going to actually um, hand it over for just a minute to our board president, um, Brian Garris, to say a couple words of welcome to everyone. Hey, Brian. Hey, how you doing? Thank you. Um, Tiffany, thank you for letting me kick this thing off. Um, I wanted to thank everybody for attending uh, with close to 70 attendees. This is by far one of our largest um, virtual town halls. Um, I want to introduce myself, I guess. I'm Brian Garris. I'm a current project manager and principal with Milestone Construction, also the uh, current president for Plan New Hampshire. Um, it's great to see everybody, a lot of familiar faces, a lot of new faces, which is outstanding. Um, we always love new members, new interests, and seeing people getting involved. Um, this is one of our greatest uh, events of the year that I enjoy because we do get to see everybody um, on here and get to hear what happened last year, what happened this year, what's coming up and get everybody together. So I uh, wanna thank you for attending. Welcome everybody and uh, we'll get on with the program. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Um, speaking of Brian, <laughs> thank you to Milestone Construction for sponsoring this event. Of course, um, our sponsors and our members really help keep all of our programs going. Um, so we really appreciate their support today and every day. They're longtime supporters um, of Plan New Hampshire. Today, this is our agenda. We're going to, um, I'm going to take some time to introduce plan or reintroduce plan, who we are, what we do. I'm going to review some of the, uh, the feedback we received from a survey that we were promoting just prior to this event and also kind of in partnership with this event. And then look back at last year, some of the things that were accomplished, things that we were able to do in 2022, and then um, a look into this year, 2023. Uh, then we'll hopefully have some time at the end because hopefully I won't be talking for 55 minutes um, for folks who might have questions or want to have discussion. But in the meantime, as I mentioned before, please um, throw any questions or comments into the chat while we are um, presenting. And we appreciate that interaction as much as it can be in a virtual, large virtual event. So starting with who we are. Um, Plan New Hampshire was founded in 1989 by a group of architects who really wanted to create a space to bring together not only architects, but planners, engineers, and others who have um, 
who shared a vision of healthy and vibrant communities across the state. Uh, our mission is to foster excellence in planning, design, and development of New Hampshire's built environments. So that mission really guides all of our work. And to that end, our strategy continues to be bringing people together from across the community development sector and sharing information and inspiration um, related to community design, built environment, and how we can all contribute positively to um, you know, people living, working, playing here in the state of New Hampshire. So that's our little our little elevator pitch about Plan New Hampshire. Um, I want to take a moment to introduce our leadership. So this is our executive board. I believe almost the whole executive board is with us today on this call, which is wonderful. They're very supportive of them and their organizations, very supportive of Plan New Hampshire. Um, and we are really grateful for their volunteer service, as well as the service of all of our board members. So we have a 19 member board in total. You may recognize some of these individuals. You may have been on our board in the past. I'm constantly, you know, as a newer person to Plan New Hampshire, I'm constantly meeting folks who previously were on our board or were the board president for many years. And it's just great to see um, the kind of network that Plan has created over the past, you know, 30 plus years. Um, we were rely, we're very small staff, so we rely heavily on active board members and committees to really move our work forward. So we're really indebted to their commitment. In terms of staff, we are small but mighty, but I'm thrilled to say we're now small but mighty, but three. <laughs> this time last year we were two. And now there's three of us, so we're um, growing uh, slowly but surely. Um, many of you especially if you're already a Plan New Hampshire member or possibly a grantee if you're representing a municipality and you're a grantee with the Invest NH municipal grants, you are probably already familiar um, with these folks. But Cecilia Azzi is our membership coordinator and Alyssa Del Tufo just joined our team in January, um, which was just so wonderful. We really needed her support because the Invest NH grants, which we'll talk a little bit later about a little bit later on, um, are really going full steam ahead. And that's her main focus. So she's full time, um, primarily focused on that that program. So if you haven't met these folks yet via email or in person, you know, you probably will um, soon. And we're always open to people reaching out to us. We'll have all of our contact info at the end of this slideshow. So um, please feel free to email or call us anytime. Um, I did notice we all live in R, like towns that start with the letter R. So I don't know if that's some kind of strange, deeper meaning there, but um, if you wanna work for Plan New Hampshire, you have to move somewhere that starts with an R apparently. So moving on to the other core group of plan that I'd like to introduce, and that's our members. Um, of course, I'm not gonna, introduce each individual member, but I think it's always very important to acknowledge um, how important our membership is and the fact that we are a membership organization. Our membership's comprised of a variety of practitioners and volunteers from across the community development sector, um, folks in the AEC industry, economic development folks, planners, volunteers from municipalities, from boards, commissions, et cetera, as well as nonprofit organizations and students are all a part of our membership. Um, and they're a huge support network for us, you know, whether it's, whether they're here to, you know, enjoy some of the benefits of membership or here to support our mission and really help move the field forward. We're really grateful to them. These are our platinum and gold members who really go above and beyond to support us both financially, but also quite actively in our committees and our programs and events throughout the year. Um, and Cecilia, I know um, I know everyone's muted, but do you want to unmute and add anything as our membership coordinator? Hello, everyone. I did want to uh, thank our members that have been renewing throughout the year. And we also want you to know you're welcome to let us know if there's anything we can do for you. Um, but we do appreciate your membership. Thank you. Thanks, Cecilia. Um, we currently have, I should know it right off the top of my head, but I always have to be sure, we have 74 uh, various 
companies, organizations, municipalities who are a part of our membership. And of course, that equates to many more individuals. Um, but that's that's our membership currently. And it, it's really great. Um, we're pretty excited. Even in the past year, we were able with Cecilia's work and the hard work of our membership committee to increase membership by 20%, which is, is wonderful. So um, this slide and the next slide, they're all either brand new members to plan or perhaps previous members who um, decided in 2022 to return. So we're really grateful to them. We also have a few new members even this year already, even though we're only in February. Um, so also grateful to, to those folks. Uh, we've seen a lot of activity from our new members, a lot of involvement in our golf tournament, our networking events, um, other things. So we're we're pretty excited about the people who've joined in the past year or who have rejoined. So thank you to everyone. Um, and I actually am going to put someone on the spot. Um, Jody, are you okay being put on the spot? To talk. I would love to hear um, if you could share with everyone that's here a little bit about what membership has meant for the city of Manchester or for yourself. Yeah, of course. Uh, from the city side of it, uh, there's a lot of value through joining Plan New Hampshire as a member from a municipal side. Uh, mostly the design charrettes that Plan New Hampshire conducts is true planning at its core. And if you haven't had the opportunity to experience one of the design charrettes, please get involved or just stop in and view some of the, the volunteers at work because that is really what has brought me into wanting to bring the city into what Plan New Hampshire has to offer. Um, Plan came to Manchester in 20, was it 2018 or 2019 for the fit New Horizons charrette. And that's when I brought it back to my boss at the time at the planning office and said, you know, this is a great asset. And uh, so through the next couple of years, COVID happened. And then uh, last year, it was a done deal. And we knew that the city wanted to become a member of Plan New Hampshire, uh, not just for the benefits of the charrette, but also the connections that are made through the, the engineering, the architecture firms, the landscape architects. It provides a good foundation to creating connections that I didn't find that I could get through some of the other organizations that we were members of. Um, so from a municipal side of it, I think it's super beneficial for um, the cities and towns across the state of New Hampshire to get involved with the, the membership. Thanks, Jody. I appreciate that. Um, and I also appreciate you giving a break from everyone hearing me like <laughs> consistently for this entire hour. <laughs> um, we had one more member who was willing to let me put them on the spot. Um, Christina from Moultonboro. I know sometimes your connectivity is a little iffy, but how is it today? And do you, are you able to share a little bit with us from your experience? Um, Christina's on the Heritage Commission, so also municipal related, but kind of at that volunteer level. So I put my volume on, but I don't dare try to do the image because we're in the middle of a snowstorm here. And I live on top of a hill and it, the internet goes in and out quite a lot. But just to say, I, I see many familiar faces and um, Plan New Hampshire has been very generous in Moultonboro. We've had two charrettes over the years, the first 2012, the second in 2018, both focused on the Moultonboro village area. And we We've received many wonderful recommendations for that process. Um, there is enormous value in Plan New Hampshire and being a member. I, I was hoping to see a couple of faces from other town boards here today, but unfortunately it's just me. Um, we uh, have actively been trying to remind people that historic preservation is indeed part of planning. And that's sort of what I focus on with my Heritage Commission work, but I'm also our town's Lakes Region Planning Commissioner. So I focus on the bigger issues of the region and not just Moultonboro. I'm not sure if you want any more, but I can maybe chime in with Q&A. Yeah, that was wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate it. And it worked out perfect. I know we were worried about connectivity, but um, I appreciate you chiming in. Um, so thank you to Jody and Christina. Uh, I'll probably put at least one other person on the spot later on. Um, but for now, I'm going to move on to discuss some of the results of our recent feedback survey. Um, 
this is something we've been promoting a, a very short brief feedback survey that we've been promoting over the past month or so, as well as promoting simultaneously with this um, town hall. And we tried to keep it short and sweet, focused mostly on better understanding what kind of content our members and other supporters really want to see from Plan New Hampshire. So I just wanted to communicate out some of what we learned. Um, you'll see that the respondents were um, about almost half and half, about 58% reported being members, 42% um, not sure or not members. Um, in terms of industries that were represented, almost 80% were some combination of like planners or various professionals from the architecture, engineering, construction um, industry who, who probably do make up our main um, a lot of our our members and our audience, um, but also folks from the municipal side of things uh, were were also a part of this survey. Um, and uh, you know, about forty one percent report attending many of our events, which is wonderful, three to five or six or more events annually, which is really great. So we really value the insight and input of anyone and everyone who participated in this survey. We are going to try and make something like this. Um, just an annual feedback loop for ourselves and our program committee. Um, in terms of the two, I mean, really the two main questions we wanted to know is what, what are the plan events that interest you the most? And then what kind of content are you looking for? So we listed all the options of the types of events we currently have, and of course had like an other option. Um, but you'll see that in terms of 50% or more of respondents, you know, identifying a specific event as something they they really look forward to with Plan New Hampshire. Um, virtual workshops and virtual webinars like today, uh, our fall conference, those were really at the forefront, um, followed closely by in-person workshops and walking tours of um, communities who've been through the Charette program here. Um, so those are really like kind of at the forefront of this survey, you know, networking, volunteering with plan um, right behind there. So again, really helpful to us, you know, it's only a certain sampling, but uh, it just helps us to have this time to get this feedback from um, members and people who follow plan and who are a part of our programs throughout the year. We also um, asked about content. So again, we, we offered a bunch of options and allowed people to um, add things in that might not have been present. So the top three um, responses, which probably aren't surprising to folks, were zoning and land use, mixed use development, and then housing in general. There were also a couple write-ins um, for placemaking or scattered sites for housing justice and homelessness. So I think those are pretty um, important to point out. And you can just see like where everything else lined up um, in terms of what people's interests are. I, I noticed that a lot of the interest in certain events or certain content also seem to align with the professional sector that folks um, identified with in the in the survey. So that's probably not too surprising. Unfortunately, a lot of city planners probably aren't going to come out to our golf event, <laughs> um, you know, but a lot of construction professionals, you know, might be there. So there's there's always something for everyone. Um, and this just really helps us make sure that we're still like on the pulse of what our community wants to know more about. Um, it's easy for us to think, well, everyone's talking about housing. Like, let's not do something about housing. It's like, well, we're all talking about housing for a reason. So um, something like this helps us just kind of, and our program committee stay on point with, with the types of programs we're bringing to everyone. So thank you everyone who responded to that. I'm going to pivot now um, to look back at 2022 and just take a moment. Some of this, if if folks read my um, e-newsletter in the beginning of January, some of this will be repeat. But just just to kind of take a pause and see, you know, what happened in 2022 and what were we able to accomplish? Um, you know, despite our best wishes, we kept everything virtual in the beginning. So. Um, we even had had an in-person event we had to cancel just because things were still a little dicey. Um, but we had our town hall as we're having right now. We had two really great webinars. The first was featuring New Hampshire Housing and the Mount Washington Valley Housing Coalition. And that was really great. It was focused on the economics of development and the impact of land use regulations on housing supply and affordability in the state. Um, and the second, we took a little bit more of an inspirational angle 
and we had a speaker in from virtually from a Pennsylvania based firm. His name is Mark Evans, and he uh, presented on innovative engagement strategies for community supported planning. Um, which was really wonderful. He talked a lot about how to bridge the gap between, you know, your public planning goals and then private development realities and just making sure that your plans and your outcomes reflect, you know, the community's vision. So it was wonderful. If you weren't able to catch either of those, they are on our in our online resource library. So we try to anything that's like webinar based um, is fairly easy for us to provide in our resource library. So we try to capture those things so that people can revisit them. Finally, in the summer, we were in person. Everyone was thrilled, I think. Um, we returned to our annual awards evening fully in person the year before it had been hybrid. And um, that's a time when we recognize the Plan New Hampshire Merit Awards. Um, the four projects that are listed here were all or, um, projects that received merit awards this past year. And those are projects that um, really are recognized by a selection committee as outstanding and demonstrating how the built environment can make a positive contribution to people and places here in New Hampshire. Um, they're all wonderful projects. And there's more information about them on our website if you're not familiar with them. And that same evening, we also recognize our scholarship recipients. So in partnership with the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation, um, every year, we help to award scholarships to students from New Hampshire who are studying in fields that align with our mission. And last year, we were able to award $23,000 in scholarships to eight students. Um, most of them were at that awards evening and talked a little bit about the work they're doing. And so it's really, it's always nice to see kind of that next generation of engineers, designers um, coming through the ranks. So it's it's really wonderful. And I, I constantly meet people and we have some people on our board who were scholarship recipients. Um, so it's nice to see uh, the reach that that program has had. Uh, the photo here is from a walking tour we did in the town of Bristol. Um, that was in the summer. It was a beautiful day. Nick Coates, who's the former, you know, formerly with the town of Bristol, now with the town of Lebanon, um, city of Lebanon, but he gave us a tour of all the things they've accomplished there since two of their plan charrettes that they had in 2008 and 2018. So that was, that was really, um, it was just inspiring to see the implementation, you know, after the shred is done and the report is given to a community. It takes time. You can't always see the impact of that one or two years later. So it was really nice to be able to revisit how much they have done there and how much of it connects back to um, Plan New Hampshire and some of the programs we're able to provide. And then finally, our fall conference. It was our first time returning to it in a few years. And we really focused on retail and the essential role that downtowns and commercial districts play in community vibrancy. It was quite successful. Um, we're looking forward to it being even more successful this year as more and more things are in person. Thank you to anyone who um, was able to be with us at any of these events. Um, we rounded out the fall and winter with um, some of our classics, our golf, tournament, our member thank you event. And then we did have a design charrette in the town of Temple, which was our 73rd community design charrette. Um, as many of you know, that's really one of our signature programs. And I did not ask Jody or Christina to mention the charrette program, but the fact that it was on their minds as a key, um, like a core benefit of being connected to plan, I think speaks a lot to the program. Um, these are photos from that uh, photos and drawings from the charrette that we had last October. And I believe we have Christine Robidoux. Are you on the call today, Christine? Can I put you on the spot to say a few things about what, what the charrette has meant for Temple? Obviously, you're only a few months out. <laughs> Sure. Um, I'm here um, and snowed in at my house like every, well, like many people, not everyone, but <laughs> um, so we, we had originally been uh, hoping to do the charrette in 2021. Um, so we were really happy to see it happen in 2022. Uh, I would say um, we got a, a really good turnout for our charrette. We are a small town of about 1,400 residents. Um, and, you know, just from myself attending other events around the state, 
um, I'm hearing more and more, how do we get people to show up for events and, or meetings and things like that? And I think for us, especially since the charrette, that hasn't really been a problem. We, I, I think the charrette really helped get people engaged in what was going on in the community. Um, we had a somewhat controversial area, <laughs> a project area that we looked at during our charrette. So I think that, you know, I sort of joked about this um, at the Housing Academy session last week, like just put out a controversial um, mailer and people will show up. But <laughs> so so I don't recommend that um, as a tactic um, because it tends to lead to some misinformation as well. But I would say that um, the charrette really did get people to show up and people are talking about it still. And they have been asking for more forums and more conversations and just citing some of the recommendations and um, that, that came out of the charrette as um, some things to pursue as a community. So um, it was all good. <laughs> um, and we were really grateful uh, for the team that came. Um, so I don't, I'm happy to answer specific questions as well. Thank you, Christine. It's awesome to hear that you already feel like there's some momentum coming out from the charrette process because you're only four months out from it, which were, have also been our snowy, cold months. So the fact that you feel like it's kind of helping to energize your community, I, I, I love hearing that. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely is. And, you know, we got a report, I think, the first week of January. So as soon as the written report came out, people were like, when are we going to talk about this? <laughs> so <laughs> so it was great. <laughs> we have a really engaged community for a small town. And I think a lot of that is because of the charrette. That's awesome. Thank you. Oops, sorry, everyone. Scrolling back to quickly. Um, thank you, Christine. Um, so I'm I'm now going to take us to 2023, where we are. You know, it's already the end of February. I don't know how that happened. Um, and just do a quick overview about some of our priorities for this year and things you can expect from us um, for the next 10 months. Um, you know, for people who might connect to the more boring side of organizational goals. Of course, we have those as well. Um, I'm going to be focusing a lot on strengthening some of our committees, growing our revenue, um, continuing to improve membership processes, as well as the membership experience, um, and making sure our programming is meeting the needs not only of our members, but also the larger community, because not everyone is going to be a member or maybe can become a member based on organizational policies and things like that. So, um, you know, members aren't our only audience and, and that's something we are very well aware of and it's really important to us. Um, I'm not going to go too much deeper into this slide, but um, I do want to say that there's always a place for any of you on our committees. So don't be shy if you're looking for, you know, an a little additional responsibility in your life. Um, we're always looking for folks who want to be a part of what we're doing and help move these things forward. In terms of programs, uh, the Invest in Age partnership is definitely worth its own spotlight, I would say. Um, this was something that launched last year, August or September. It's honestly a blur. Um, and Plan New Hampshire, you know, our role is really specifically to the municipal planning and zoning grant program. So there are other Invest NH programs out there. Sometimes we get calls about them. We know very little about those other programs. So we do know who to refer people to. Um, but we're really on the municipal side of things. And for folks who might not be aware, although I think there are several people on this call whose towns have a, a HOP or a Navigator Award, which is wonderful, um, those funds for that grant program, they're funded by ARPA funds through the New Hampshire Department of Business and Economic Affairs. Those are, it's all a part of Governor Sununu's $100 million Invest in H initiative. So this is a smaller portion of that initiative. And Plan New Hampshire received a two-year contract through um, New Hampshire Housing to help jointly administer this program. So our key partners are New Hampshire Housing and UNH Cooperative Extension. And anyone who's already 
been awarded a grant probably knows that pretty well, that those are the three key partners you would um, be interfacing with if you're an awardee. And as I mentioned earlier, Alyssa joined our team in late January to specifically focus on this program. Um, when we first launched the program, we weren't sure what kind of reception it would have, you know, how we knew there's a need, otherwise the program wouldn't have been developed, but we just didn't know what to expect. And we have been blown away by the number of applications and inquiries and draft applications we've, um, our steering committee has received. So currently uh, this map that's right here, you know, you can see just a little icon for each community that has a navigator or housing opportunity planning grant. Um, there are five navigators and that program's no longer, you can't apply to anymore, but that's um, a program that's funding five full-time people to focus on navigation of housing and related concerns, coordination, community organizing, anything that they're, the communities they are um, dedicated to serving needs related to housing um, and regulatory change. So those five navigators are serving 12 different communities throughout the state. And then the HOP grants are for municipalities to connect with consultants who can um, focus either on needs analysis and planning, regulatory audits, or regulatory development as it relates to, again, land use and housing and how to increase housing opportunities in a way that makes sense for each you know, individual community. And so currently there's 46 grants already have been awarded, 46 different communities. Um, we're still accepting applications, so it's going to grow. We hope it grows. Um, we've already awarded $3.5 million and um, we don't want to send one penny back to the state. So we are, we are hopeful that that won't happen, that we're going to receive a lot more applications, that everyone's going to be able to successfully pursue their projects. And um, this money is going to help make a difference in the state of New Hampshire. Um, I don't know. Do you want to add anything to that, Alyssa, or just let people know um, the kinds of things they could connect with you on if they have questions? Yeah, I think um, you covered everything. If you have a NAV or a HOP grant already, you probably have heard from me at some point in time. Um, and if you do not have one, feel free to reach out. Um, we could talk about the grant program. Phase two and three are still accepting applications. And I think our contact info is in there somewhere. And I put my email in the chat. So if anybody wants to chat about it, feel free to reach out. <laughs> Thank you. Um... So that's a big part of our focus next year and something we, we didn't have in the past. Um, it is it is a gr outgrowth a bit of the Municipal Technical Assistance Grant that some of you uh, might have been a part of, but there's so much more funding behind this program. Um, so it, it's really able to help communities, you know, in leaps and bounds from where we were able to previously. This is our program calendar moving forward for the year. A lot of TBDs and things that are still, you know, really need to be like buckled down, to, but you can kind of see just what months, in what month we're having what type of program, a networking event, a walking tour. Um, we have a few dates already nailed down, our merit awards and scholarship awards evening is already confirmed for June, June 21st, Hotel Concord. Um, We'll be getting nomination information out soon for people who want to nominate a project for, for the Merit Awards. Um, scholarships are already being accepted, so anyone who knows a student who's in the fields that we're all in, um, definitely direct them to the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation website. There's kind of a one-stop shop for applying to all the scholarship opportunities that um, folks partner with them on, and that's who our partner is on that program. We also have a date confirmed for our fall conference, September 27th. That will also be at Hotel Concord. Um, they're a great supporter of ours, so we really appreciate them um, providing uh, space for us. And our golf classic is already nailed down for Beaver Meadow and Concord on October 4th. Um, as a result, none of our other events will happen in Concord, <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's a pretty central location, so a lot of our big events do happen there. Um, and we are looking forward to, you know, 
all of these things and seeing you all throughout the year, you might notice that May is not on this calendar. And um, that is strategic because we are likely to have two charrettes in May, which is quite a, um, it, it's a bit of work on the back end for staff as well as our volunteers. Um, so right now our charrette committee is reviewing, we're, we're kind of in the We've received applications, I should say, for charrettes in these four communities, and we're going through our process. Um, site visits is really the next step for each of these, and then we, you know, move forward with discussing more about the program and potentially moving um, into a official agreement and having dates and things. Um, but we're we're likely to at least be doing two to three of these this year. Very exciting. Um, Brentwood, Manchester, Campton, Newmarket, um, Manchester's. So most of these are with the municipality. Manchester's it would actually be with uh, the, um, I'm sorry, the Conservation Law Foundation in partnership with some of the city departments. So that's a little bit different with like a nonprofit applicant. Um, but we're, we're very excited about these possibilities. And if we do have three or four charrettes in 2023, we will be looking for volunteers. <laughs> um, we have typically in the last few years had one to two, you know, COVID obviously really affected that program because a virtual charrette is not, well, I haven't heard anyone be a cheerleader for virtual charrettes yet. I know some people have tried them, <laughs> but um, we'll be looking for landscape um, architects, civil engineers, traffic engineers, all the folks who are often a part of these programs. So if you've never been a part of the program before and are interested, uh, please let us know. You can throw your information in the chat or you can contact us later. Um, and we can keep you on our contact list for this program. It, it really is wonderful. Um, it's really, it's really exciting. And a lot of our um, volunteers who are part of it love being able to kind of, in some ways, get back to the basics of what what they do for a living, um, in just like a really fun and creative and meaningful um, setting. So that's my little shout out for the Shrep program. And that really brings me to the end for, for me talking. Um, you know, what can you do to support PLAN? You know, you're already doing it by being here, by learning more, by attending our events. Um, if you're not a member, we would love to have you as a member. Um, you can always refer new members. Of course, we take donations. We're a 501c3 people. So you could set up a recurring donation or, you know, donate once a year during New Hampshire Gives, um, for example. We are always looking for sponsors for our events um, and partners too, and just stay connected and think about volunteering if, if you haven't in the past. Um, and if, if you are a volunteer right now, don't leave us, we need you. <laughs> um, and, and that's really everything I have. Um, I want to remind you that here's our contact information, Alyssa, Cecilia, myself, um, call us, email us. Uh, thank you to our sponsor today, Milestone. We, I did pretty good on time. Hopefully I wasn't talking too fast. I've been told I am a fast talker. Um, but we would love to, because we have this time, open it up a bit. Have there been any questions in the chat or none? Wow, you guys have nothing to ask us. Um, Heather Rowan, are you on the call? Are you here, Heather? I'm here. Sorry about oh, that. Oh, no, that's great. <laughs> that's okay. Um, well, I know we had talked about, you know, some discussion topics or points while we have all these members yeah. and other partners and supporters here. And I, so I wanted to loop you in. Thank you. Yeah, we are, um, as the program chair, um, I am looking, as should I say, we are looking for anybody A, to join the program committee um, we are always looking for new ideas, new thoughts, um, new direction to take our programs in. Um, and meanwhile, we are looking for subject matter. We did put out that poll recently, but would love to hear directly from you today. If you have anything that you want to learn about, um, anything that's of interest, something that you think the membership would like to hear about that you could present, um, we're open to anything. And I, I would say, feel free to, um, unmute yourself if you'd like to contribute to the conversation today. 
Tiffany, you did have one new comment in the chat about letting us know how to be a volunteer. And I don't know if you want to give them the avenues. Obviously, the contact information is there. And I'd say reach out and we'll put you to work. Yes, absolutely. I see that that came from an iPhone. So in the off chance that the person is not also on a laptop, but I guess they could be, um, I won't type the response. But yes, please um, call us or email us. Um, if you know, our emails are all our first name at plannh.org. So Tiffany, Alyssa, Cecilia, or you can always do info at which is easy to remember as well. Um, and especially if you have a certain interest and you want to let us know that, like the charrettes or joining a committee, um, we can then loop you, uh, you know, connect you with either the committee chair or talk to you more about a certain program. So um, please do reach out to us. Um, hi, I just wanted to kind of chime in. Thank you for having this town hall and, and it's good to see everybody. Um, my first charrette, which I'm a big fan of charrettes, I love the public outreach forums and in any way they come, um, was 2021 in Wolfboro and big talk about transportation and pedestrian access and walkability and housing. And I just wanted to, wasn't sure if you were aware, but DOT had a meeting like two weeks ago, maybe um, in, um, in Wolfboro, public hearing for some of their transportation plans. And I went out of curiosity to just see how um, a lot of talk from the charrette with the traffic circles, um, if that was something that um, DOT was working on. And I had learned that Wolfboro had been going through this process with DOT and the 10-year transportation plan for several years. But um, they had a really good turnout. Wolfboro is a very you know motivated community. And I ran into some of the, the people um, from the charrette that organized it. And they said they had gone ahead and they created a implementation committee. So they are working on implementation from the plan from the charrette, which I thought was, was pretty exciting. Um, they had a big fire in Wolfboro where the supermarket uh, burned to the ground this year. And maybe two months ago or so, the one that was right in downtown close to the water so because of that, uh, they are planning on moving some of our recommendations from the plan about pedestrian access to the only other grocery store in town. Uh, so uh, I just it's just kudos for a well-run program, and it just is, is great for the volunteers and the people that organize that. Um, when you have a motivated community like that, and it sounds like Temple is another one uh, that's motivated, um, to really see the results of, of all the work that everyone put in and how the community is taking it. And, and the, I believe there may be a few zoning amendments that do with housing that's on the ballot this year as well. So um, it's interesting to follow up. And it, you know, it was kind of, um, you know, it was a good feeling to see that what they're working on through DOT and how everything all came together. So kudos to the whole charrette masterminds. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. And that was my first charrette. I was like just a fly on the wall with Robin and the team because mm -hmm. I had basically just started here and I was amazed by the team and, and the community. I mean, the outreach they did and the turnout they had. So it's great to hear that and not surprising maybe, you know, that they're really motivated to take it to the next, to the next step. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, again, it was one of those good, you know, you know, planning geek kind of, you know, good moods where you're like, hey, we took your ideas and we're using it. And, you know, unfortunately they had an incident, you know, where their grocery store burned down one of them. So now they're kind of, that really has been brought to the forefront. So just the work of the charrette and all the time that everyone put in, um, it's, it's just, it's just really positive for the program to see that, you know, those things are actually getting implemented. And they were very, very, you know, pleased with the report. Um, which is why they wanted to move forward and, and have an implementation committee because their fear was that it was just going to sit on a shelf and, and collect dust. So um, that was my first charrette too. So it was, it was very, it was very exciting. It was tons of fun. Um, so definitely interested in, in being a part of your future charrettes. That's awesome. Thanks, Stephanie. Yeah, you're welcome. Tiffany, we have another um, comment and question. It was a comment about the fall conference last year and being wonderful. So thank you to whomever commented um, and I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, we do not have a final subject. There have been a few ideas being thrown around. We are about to approach um, making some headway on, on a decision on a subject matter. 
Um, if you have any suggestions, we are always open ears to hearing. Thanks, Heather. Yeah, we do keep hearing, you know, housing, zoning, like these things just not just in this survey, right? They're just coming up over and over again. So we're likely to kind of triangulate around those topics, but we are we are still figuring it out. So if you want to join the committee. <laughs> I also noticed um, that one of our new members has written in the chat looking forward to helping out and uh, it's David Barch, our, one of our newest oh. members. And um, David, I would say we'd love your help. So, you know, feel, definitely we should talk to you and uh, see what kinds of things you might like to do because there are some good opportunities. Thanks, I, uh, I look forward to it. Does anyone else have any, you know, comments or questions? Um, you know, for me or anyone else on this call before we, we can always get a little bit of our day back. We don't have to use all 60 minutes, but I don't want to cut us off early if someone has anything burning in the, on their mind. Tiffany, can I just put a plug in for the scholarship committee? Yes, please. Um, hi, I'm Carolyn Corvo, a Warren Street Architects. Um, uh, I chair the scholarship committee and we are always looking for students um, in need. So if anyone has uh, an intern in their office who's still in school or knows a neighbor who's getting into architecture or engineering, um, please send them to either our website or um, New Hampshire Charitable Foundation. Um, our, our website basically just sh shoots them over to the application on New Hampshire Charitable Foundation's website. But um, the application is due April 14th. So uh, if anyone knows of anyone, please help us get the word out. Thank you. Yeah, and I believe that also includes fine art students. Is that correct? Just yes. in terms of design. So folks yep, know design students who, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's fa fairly broad in the design and planning um, world. Thanks, Caroline. Um, I've noticed, I think it's Christina who has her hand raised. Christina, did you want to say something? Oh, hello. So I think I'm unmuted now and I might even try to start the video. Let me see if I can manage <laughs> to make it work. If I get cut off, it doesn't matter at this point. Right? <laughs> so anyway, I think I'm there. Um, just to follow up on the DOT, I, because of the Lace Region Planning Commission, I do follow the DOT projects around my area. And there's an important meeting in Meredith on Wednesday night, weather permitting, of course, for us getting there. But I was interested to see that it's, although it's on Meredith Neck Road and it's a culvert project, that the New Hampshire Division of Historical Resources is also a partner at that meeting. So just to put out my plug for historic projects, um, and the 10 year plan issues, which go on and on for every town. Uh, Moulton Borough also has been dealing with DOT because we have a major project that is starting this year at Lakeshore Drive, both ends, which is right at the Central Harbor Town line. And, and yet again, there are major historical and cultural resources that will be impacted depending on how that, that project is uh, conceived. So um, a final plug, and I see Pat Myers is on this, is if you haven't already done a historic or some kind of historic cultural resources survey in your town, as development pressures increase, it's a very handy thing to have. So that's my last word of the day. I would just add on to Christina's note, <clears throat> excuse me, about the project in Moultonboro. The DOT currently has a public poll out for that project if you go to the project website um, to provide feedback for the corridor on that project. The way that ends today, so the faster the better. <laughs> I noticed in the chat as well, someone asked if 
the students for the scholarship program have to attend a New Hampshire school. And again, I don't know who it, it's from iPhone. So just in case you're not on a computer, I want to say it verbally because Caroline um, put a great response here. But um, they don't have to be attending a school in New Hampshire, but they have to call New Hampshire home. So their primary residence, uh, where they come home from school break, for example, you know, needs to be in New Hampshire. Of course, if they go to school elsewhere, we hope they return, right? Um, but it's really to support students from New Hampshire who call New Hampshire home regardless of where they are getting their degree. Would that be the right way of characterizing that, Caroline? Yeah, that was perfect. Okay, thanks. Tiffany, can I add something? Yes. All right. uh, Jody Nazaka, City of Manchester Economic Development and also Plan New Hampshire board member. Um, also wanted to throw it out there too, we'd asked about content for the upcoming fall conference. But also if anyone has an exciting project that they've worked on from one of their firms or in one of their towns or cities, please share that with us because we're always looking for content to share either on our social pages through LinkedIn um, or any of our, our Instagram page or any of those um, or to do a potential walking tour. Um, I think Tiffany's slides had the town of Bristol as one of them. So we're always looking for fun and engaging opportunities, whether it's a social media share or an in-person tour. So feel free to send those along if you have them. Thanks, Jody. Any other comments or questions? Okay, well, hearing none, I think, um, I think this was wonderful spending this time with you all. We were thrilled by the turnout and the registration numbers and also everyone who actually joined us today. So thank you so much for sharing your lunch hour with us. I hope you actually ate or are going to eat. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at future Plan New Hampshire events. Um, if you have any questions after the fact, please reach out to us and um, we're more than happy to, to answer anything or connect you um, with anything that might have been talked about today. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you, Tiffany.